Well, Yvonne, things started to go wrong for Indonesia early last week when there were protests in Jakarta by uh, conservative Muslim groups against Israel's inclusion in this tournament. Now, it, it, I should point out that it's, uh, it goes back to 2019 that Indonesia was actually granted the rights to host this tournament. But it was only in mid-2022 last year that Israel actually qualified to take part. And underlying all of this is Indonesia's uh, foreign policy, which uh, it, it is a very staunch supporter of Palestinian rights and therefore a, a very strong opponent of Israel and its occupation of the Palestinian territories. And uh, this led to, uh, there were six stadiums actually designated to host these matches and a draw for those matches was going to be tomorrow. But this then led to comments from Bali's governor last week, Wayan Costa, who said that he would refuse to allow Israel to play at the stadium that was designated in Bali near Ubud. And soon after, the governor of uh, central Java Ganja Pranowo made similar comments. Now, the Indonesian government, of course, pointed out that uh, even though its uh, foreign policy supports the Palestinian cause, of course, uh, it would separate sport from politics in this instance. It was committed to hosting these games, uh, this tournament, even though Israel had taken part. But by then, really, the damage had been done. And there were rumours last week, even, or early this week, that uh, FIFA was ready to strip Indonesia of the right to host this tournament. The minister or the head the, the top football official who is a minister in the government and also the head of uh, the uh, Indonesia Football Association flew to Doha and uh, he had talks yesterday before FIFA made this decision. Now this has been hugely uh, embarrassing for Indonesia but hugely devastating too for the millions of fans of football here. This is a, a very football mad country and of course uh, some of the members of the team and the coach were devastated by this decision. <laughs> It's just sports. It has nothing to do with politics, religion or anything else. I don't care because we work in sports, so I only think about sports. Now we can only pray and hope FIFA does not impose sanctions on Indonesia, but instead gets the opportunity to hold other tournaments so that we can continue to play. Well, and what are the implications, particularly on Indonesia, ever hosting an international sporting event again? Well, look, in the first instance, FIFA is, is preparing to announce which country will now host this tournament. There are, there's talk that maybe it will be Peru. That was the second uh, bidder, if you like, when Indonesia was granted the rights. Uh, Argentina and Qatar have both offered to host it as well. We'll probably hear in the next few days when that, who that will be. Uh, Indonesia, of course, won't be allowed to play at that tournament. It was only allowed to play in this tournament because it was the host, but it didn't actually qualify. And, I mean, you know, there are talks of sanctions. FIFA is likely or expected at least to impose some sort of sanctions on Indonesia, whether that's a fine, whether it's a ban. I mean, it's only in the last few months that Indonesia has started to rebuild its soccer credentials. You'll remember the football tragedy at the Malang Stadium in October where 135 people were killed in that soccer stampede. That led to the Premier League in Indonesia being suspended for months and uh, Indonesia managed to avoid fines or bans in that instance, but it's only in recent weeks that that tournament or that competition has sort of uh, regained or resumed, I should say. In the longer term, of course, it does now raise questions as to whether Indonesia will ever host any kind of global competition. I mean, at the end of the G20 summit in Bali in November, President Joko Widodo flagged the possibility that Indonesia would bid to host the 2036 Olympics. It's really hard to see that ever happening now if uh, we're talking about competitions where Israel would automatically part, be part of that competition. So this will be damaging for Indonesia beyond just soccer. What are the politics behind all of this and what impact might it have on voters in the lead up to next year's election? Well, yeah, I mean, it's worth knowing that both the governor of Bali, Wayan Costa, and the governor of central Java, Ganja Pranowo, are members of the ruling PDIP party, the party that Joko Widodo is also a member of. And it is uh, an election campaign year leading into that uh, poll next February. The fact that uh, both these uh, governors have made comments that will appeal to uh, the conservative Muslim voters, if you like. This is the biggest Muslim-majority country in the world. Conservative voters 
voters are a very important block, a very large block in any election here. So you could argue that these comments were made very much to position both men in elections that will be held next year. Ganja Pranowo, the central Java governor, is actually seen as one of the front runners to win the presidency next year, or at least the vice presidency. Uh, so you have to wonder how his comments might uh, influence his campaign. He hasn't yet been confirmed or endorsed by that party to be their, their candidate, but uh, people are expecting that may well happen. And Wyan Costa will also stand for election again in regional elections later next year. And again, you, uh, you know, it will be interesting to see whether his comments uh, that have ultimately caused this tournament to be cancelled in Indonesia, whether those comments will affect his re-election chances next year. Interesting indeed. Anne Barker, thank you. Thanks, Yvonne.